Hello. Hello. How are you? You all right? So, Metropolis Arc 1. This is going to be the first of the two in-depth looks at the library. There's an overview. If you just want a 10-minute overview, that's a separate video. Hopefully, you can find a link there somewhere on YouTube. And this part one is going to look at the orchestral side of the library. It's the first of the orchestral tool libraries I've looked at. Um, the lovely people there contacted me a few weeks ago and said, do you want to do a walkthrough? I said, yeah, it'd be lovely. Can I say what I want? And they said, yep. And so there we are. That's the deal. Uh, also part of the beta team, therefore. Um, you have the library in multi-articulation and single articulations. In the multi-articulation, you can see here, there's how many? Two, four, six, that many. Uh, different articulations, all controlled by key switches. It'll be 12, won't it? And if they don't all fit on, and in this case they don't, if you click this button, look, there's another option for one more, tremolo decrescendo. So if you click that, then what was the legato has now become tremolo decrescendo. Which is that. However, Really, we want to be listening to what we had, sustain octave for the time being. The other point to note about that, if you again, if I click here, see this little thing? That switches on true legato or legato, I think emulated legato or true legato if it's available. Uh, so we want to hear that. And that's where we're going to start. This is, let, let me just quickly say the, is, the, the strings are divided into high and low. High is viola and violins. Low is cello and double bass. Everything else is a bit curious, really, because everybody, everything else is individual instruments in various groupings, but they're, uh, it's all bassoons or it's all contra bassoons or so on and so forth. But with the strings, they've combined them. As I understand it, that's sort of because it fits in with the rest of the Berlin range at the moment that there are individual strings, but they haven't done the rest of the library yet. So it sort of fits in with those who are following the Berlin series, I think. Um, which I haven't. I don't have the Berlin series. You see here I've got orchestral string runs. Uh, that's it for orchestral tools. It's a very good library, by the way. Um, but I just haven't gone down that road as yet. So this is sort of not quite the first, but almost the first introduction I've had to uh, what orchestral tools is about. And they're all recorded in Berlin in the Tel Teledex, Teldex? Teledex? Uh, studio. One of those will be right. Anyway, enough waffle. Let's get on with it. So here we go with the octaves. Speed for you. Like pretty much the whole library, it cuts through, doesn't it? It's. I think you'll find that will cut through very nicely in a mix. Um, sometimes people want the super lush sweet sound. Hmm, now this is much more upfront and in your face, uh, but it's not harsh. It's not nasty. It's just. You know, just going for it, isn't it? Uh, and then if I say, if I turn that legato off, you can then play polyphonically. And back on again. The you you could, the key switches, by the way, you can stack them by um, by this thing. I'm not really going to go into that here. That's sort of A level stuff, really. I'm just going to show you the sort of core functionality. Um, I'll show you more uh, behind the hood in some of the other ones, actually. the Let's just quickly go through a couple more here. So this is unison, sustain.
Very nice. And it's very nice to meet Trems. A lot of the patches have portato in long and short variations. And it's important to note that they do still release, which is great. You can take your finger off, still sounds okay, so you can play. And so on and so forth. Um, okay, spiccato in octaves. in unison I'm a big fan of this one as well the blurred spiccato you hear that you go what's that all about but I find you know if you start it's when you're doing sort of clustery or sh fast run stuff or <laughs> Know all this stuff. It's really handy, and you won't get that kind of. You know, if I do that, compare that to, say, the unison. Do you hear? It's kind of doesn't. It's not not all the same, is it? That's really nice. That, and I don't think I've got anything else that's got that. So that was particularly fun to see. Oh, look, Q bass is auto saving. Bartok, pizzicato. Tell you what, let's just quickly switch here at this point to the uh, mic position, shall we? Let's see what we're playing with. So you click at the top here to activate and deactivate. So that's taking it out of memory. Here's your close. So you do hear plenty of room, even in the close. That's one thing. If you want a really dry library, mm -mm, not for you. Uh, it's always going to have some room in there. But of course, you can control how much that there is. Let's solo... A, B. Very wide perspective, this seems to be. A, B. Um, get rid of it again. Tree is the Decker tree, which is the... I think of as the conductor position. But right, it's sort of above, obviously. But And then surround. And important to note with surround, when you turn it on... is that, well, with all these, you can route to whatever contact output you want. So if you're working in surround, the idea is these mics are specially designed that if you're in a surround situation, stick them out of output five or six or whatever it is you use, and they'll go to the rears. Um, by default, these seem to load up on uh, close and trim. Um, there we go. Well, let's, while we're here, uh, Niante, that's dynamics going down to zero. Cutoff filters, attack release. There's a, a few simple things here. For the dynamics, you have got you have control of what your CCs are doing and also your keyboard response here. Um, again, I'm not going to go through in great detail all that stuff. It's all part of this thing called the capsule, which is common to all the modern orchestral tools libraries. Um, I guess you could do a whole thing on that alone. And did I show you this already? I forget. Um, if I, I don't think I did. So if you click the spanner here, here's where you get a lot of other stuff. Round robin. So here, it's cycling through um, your different round robins. There's five in this case. There, it'll do it by random. Polyphonic. Um, so if I play a chord... They're all going to play different versions. That becomes something of a deal when you're looking at choirs. We'll come on to that later. Fake neighbor, what that does is um, it essentially makes increases your number of round robins by stealing the note next to it and pitch shifting it. So you shouldn't hear any of that machine gun effect with playing around with all those. Volume range, CC. So I'm playing here. My key velocity, if I switch this. It's using CC1 in the corner, so you can have whichever you like. Lots of things to play with. Um, 
I'm a simple soul. I tend to leave things by the default unless there's something that's bugging me, and then I'll go in and, and uh, muck around with it. I got distracted. Crescendo, quiet. Let's turn up the seat because this is CC uncontrolled. Let's play a, a chord for you so you can hear how that goes across. Seems to be timed pretty nicely, doesn't it? And they're slow. Important point to mention on these is... They're not, at this stage, time-stretched. You can't sync these to host tempo uh, or anything yet. Now, I hope that's something they will develop in time because that seems quite important to me for Dynamics patches. Um, and they sound great, but, you know, getting it timed to whatever you're doing is obviously critical. And there's the swell, and that hidden articulation uh, I've already played you. That was the first thing I played you, I seem to remember. That was Finkenstein. Now we're going on to Wolfenstein. That was a game, wasn't it? Um, I don't know what these names refer to. They're obviously Germanic. German company, they're allowed. Woof. Here we go with the cellos. An enormous number of double basses. I forget what it is. I think it's about 112. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a very double bass heavy. I'm clicking these, of course, key switches are controlled here. I'm now playing at the bottom. You can just do whatever you want. They're really good, those trims. They've really got an edge to them and a bite, haven't they? Portato. Long. And short. I really like how you can do that. On those shorts, sometimes you want it a bit... You want it almost playing staccato, and then you just release early, and it works. You might want to muck around with key switches if you're doing that for real, but certainly for rough and ready, that's really good. The all-important spiccatos in octaves. On octaves, on octaves. With my legendary playing abilities or inabilities. But they sound great to me. They really sound nice. Spartok. Oh, I've played something silly over Here we go. Um. Crescendo. We're back on CC land here. I need to turn this up. Love all that stuff. Love it all me. Your swell and that decrescendo of the tremors. Not quite as many articulations as you don't have to blur it or anything, but arguably you don't really need it in the lows. Let's move on to other sections, starting with woodwinds. There are no flutes, there are no oboes, there are no clarinets, all that airy fairy stuff, you know. What do you want that in an epic trailer library for? So instead, we have a couple of bassoons. We have the Holbein 
regular bassoon. A lager, is it? Hold it. No true legato here. the first of the crescendo flutter town which is rather good uh who have we got here barnack barnack contrabassoons uh the lowest of the uh is that the very lowest of the bassoons i think it might be certainly is here Jump was me on the CC. I don't know what it was that. And again, with the same sort of variations. And that's it for woodwinds. We've just got those two. So on to the brass. Now the trumpets here, these really, these really have an edge to them. I'm only halfway up on the CC here. Reiki. Yeah, it doesn't go down the street. Bit of the lowest dynamic there. That doesn't really go lower than MF this library. Maybe MP at a push. It's not the point to go quiet in this. Um, great, and here we have the uh, lengths you hear there. <laughs> and the actual staccato. Thing. It is a shame there's no true legato on this patch in particular because it's a fantastic tone, isn't it? That'll cut through anything. That'll cut through a concrete wall. Clusters, more clusters. For that moment, you know. <laughs> and regular crescendos. Long and short, and a bit of a swell. And some flutteries. For that moment. Oh. 
Hey, that woke you up, didn't it? Speaking of waking you up, Schwartz Dornhorns. Okay, so quick bit of maths for this. We have nine players for Horn Leads. And then afterwards, I'll play the three player version, which is meant for sort of chord work. So we have True Legato here for the horns. So that's sort of when you want to play a mono line. <laughs> Cubase, I think. It's been doing that a bit. It's very good down the lower end as well. So we'll quickly whiz through. More than two notes, definitely not. Uh, some rips. dynamics as well. I'm not sure if they're real dynamics, are they? It's just quiet and loud. Who wants a quiet rip? Who wants that? Hit the key hard. Okay, some crescendos. And swell in long and short variation here. Flattery. And the clusters. Let's see if we've got any hidden ones. We've got any bonus hidden ones. Cluster staccato as well. We do. We do. It's back here. Any more for any more? Looks like it. So loads to play with there. Put the back on the uh, Go away. Right. Um, for Rot Dawn Horns. What I should have done actually before I loaded. So this. Mm, yeah, okay. dynamic and I will just do a quick compare just so you can hear what those chords do sound like if you stack up four lots of nine or whatever it is you're playing let's just get rid of the legato <laughs> I mean, you know, superficially, it's it's sort of a quite nice noise, isn't it? But when you hear what the more realistic um, orchestration of that is, um, that sounds like a real section again, doesn't it? When you're not stacking up ludicrous numbers. And we have, very quickly... the end, did I? No problems there. Um, now we're going into the low brass, and we have that three distinct instruments. We have bass trombones, chimbassi, and tubers. 
And I think it starts with the most aggressive and works their way down because this really is kind of crazy nuts down the bottom end. Why did I turn that up? for bass, doesn't it? I love the bass trombone patch, can you tell? Um, Chimbassi. They also have considerable heft, but a different tone. If you don't want to go the full blat, but still have some graunch in it. So again, no true legato for the... Oh, oh, man. Come on, come on. Got to, haven't I? Got to just stack these. Put that on Marcato as well. Get that coming out of one. If you need to pin someone to the back wall uh, with your low brass, then th hit, this is your man. Uh, save now. What am I doing? Um, don't matter. Right, sorry, got distracted. That really is. should at some point point out with the capsule you can move all these around you can change anything to anything wherever you want it but um that's all for you to muck around with really uh tubers which is a smoother tone if you really don't want any blend <laughs>
Name the film. Come on. It's not a fathership. It's a mothership. Um, short versions. I believe it was Closing Cans of the Third Kind. Um, I believe they was an actual tuba they used for that film, you know. Which is why I always think of it when I play tubers. I don't play actual tubers. I just play... Well, look, that's taken us... That's not too bad, is it? It's just over half an hour, and that's gone through most of the patches. I will quickly show you what the single articulation patches look like in the orchestra. All the instruments are the same as what we've seen, but let's pick on... OK, let's pick on strings. Here you have all the different articulations, and if you wanted just the legato strings, which is pretty much where we started, you load that up. And it's a different sort of interface, uh, much cleaner, much simpler. And you've got this groovy uh, thing in the side here that that's showing you now CC1. So you don't have to look at what I'm doing down here anymore. You're looking there. And you switch to velocity, dynamic switch. Or crossfade there. Um, and really, that's the orchestra. And that's sort of about half of the library. We've also got these other districts to look at. District 2, choir, district 3, percussion, district 4, band, and they'll all be in another video. Thanks very much, everyone. Uh, and I'll join you again shortly.